Well, good evening and welcome to St. John's uh, service of carols, uh, which we're broadcasting and sharing with you over the internet and passing around to anybody who wants to just celebrate uh, Christmas. Uh, whether you have been isolating or shielding, whether you've been helping others or having to carry the extra load for the sake of others, I think we all agree it's been a very challenging year. Perhaps the biggest cost has been not being able to see loved ones freely, and it is no doubt sad if you've been unable to have visitors, if you're in a home, uh, or not been able to see your family and friends. Perhaps you've even been having to isolate or shield for some time. It's also, of course, sad that members of the church have not been able to visit you, and we've not been able to see you uh, within our family or at Coffee Connect. It is a good time, though, to recognise and thank the wonderful family members, church members and staff who have been able to care for you uh, so well during this time. We should remember, of course, uh, that Jesus himself left his heavenly home to come and be with us while we were alone, while we were lost and didn't know what to do. And so while we prepare for his return and while we wait for him to come and find us and claim us as his own, we look forward to the time when we can get back together again and see one another. As we begin this service, I call the bidding prayer. Beloved in Christ, at this Christmas time, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God, from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially for this, our own community. And because this would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, the lonely and oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the unloved, the aged, and little children, and all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved the heart of his love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater life, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are one forevermore. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Yeah. 
first lesson is Genesis chapter 3, in which God announces in the Garden of Eden that the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God calls to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The snake deceived me. And I ate. So the Lord God said to the snake, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second lesson is Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 2, in which Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdened them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
third lesson this evening is Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8, in which Luke records the shepherds going to the manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, the Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the height, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Born unto us this day, a Savior. Gifted from heaven to a manger. Sing out his praise It's Christmas Born is the king rejoicing 
our fourth lesson, is John chapter 1, in which John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good evening. I suppose one of the enduring images of the Nativity story is that Joseph and the pregnant Mary uh, are turned away from hotel after hotel because the city is so busy and they end up in a stable. There was no room for them at the inn is one of our sort of resounding sort of messages about that story. It's one of the words or phrases that often rings out. But what strikes me is that, that there was no room at the inn did not mean that God could not make room. He found room in the stable. He, and because of that, because he was able to come as Jesus Christ, because he achieved those things, we discover that God is able to make room for us in so many ways. This has been a year in which we are struggling to sort of make room, even if we have room, we can't have people round as much as we would like. And it's, uh, we become ever so conscious about space and the presence of people around us. We want that. We want to be comforted and reminded that we are loved and cherished and we belong. Part of being a church is about reminding and cherishing one another as another of God's children. And of course, we want to get together to encourage one another with hope of for better times ahead, both uh, within this, this season, this, this time in our country, but ultimately for the things that Jesus Christ will return with when he comes to claim his own. But we're very interested this evening, I'm very interested to think about how God makes room for us. The gospel uh, uh, reflects, uh, John, the gospel writer, reflects on this important characteristic in the introduction to his eyewitness accounts of Jesus Christ. He uses an interesting phrase. He uses the phrase, he made his dwelling amongst us, even though there was no room for them at the inn. It strikes me that he was still able to jostle along and fit in with humankind. We couldn't be, he couldn't be kept out. He wanted to be amongst us. And he used a phrase, John used a phrase to describe Jesus's life with us as, as, as the son of God amongst the people that he came and he tabernacled amongst us. It's an old uh, idea drawn from Jewish history. Uh, when they had fled from captivity in Egypt, God made his dwelling amongst his people in a large tent called the tabernacle. The Ark of the Covenant and the law were held there. It was an important central point. It was focal point for the people, and it reminded them that his presence was with them as he led them in their slow march to freedom from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. It reminds 
the Jewish reader, and it should remind us of God's abiding love and care with them while he was amongst them. But John is writing these, these words, these, this prologue, at a different time. It's a time when the land that they had been given was now occupied by foreign powers who, who, who uh, oppressed them and sometimes restricted what they could do. Occasionally, there were cruel retributions against the Jewish people. And that was just a succession of people who had invaded conquerors and rulers who had come and made them less than they were meant to be. They certainly didn't feel free. John reminds us that, the, that God came as Jesus, fully man and fully God, to be with his people again and in an even more real and present way, even closer than the tabernacle. Because at that time, only Moses and a select few others were able to enter into God's presence. Whereas what John tells us was that he was living amongst us, like our neighbor, like somebody that you know in the community, a, a friend, somebody that you could have just walked up to and talked with. And in doing so, Jesus made God available to everyone in a way that they could understand. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? All the ideas that we have of God, and yet Jesus came as a person, a human being, completely like us in so many ways, that we would be able to understand what both God was like and what living with God was like. He wanted to, us to see for ourselves in ways that we could grasp. It might well be that you find yourself play. If you've got young children or grandchildren and they've been able to come over, it may well be that you find yourself playing with, with toys that are way beneath your, your IQ and your, 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 your maturity level. And you may find yourself making little noises and, and things about animals or trucks and trains and things like that. But what we're doing is we're showing our children, we're interacting with our children to show us how things fit together. Well, God, who's beyond so much of what we understand, came to us in Jesus Christ so that we could understand what he was like and how things work and how things are supposed to fit together. It showed us that we didn't really know that we could talk to God. It showed people that we didn't really trust him as much as that we thought. And it showed us, he showed us how to look after our relationship with God and, and how to look after other people the way that he would. And what Jesus did was he demonstrated God's love to prove what he was saying. He healed people. He cast darkness out of people who were struggling. And he showed the people how much they were loved. Jesus interacted with us. He made space available for us to discover who we are as well as who he is. That's the unique thing about Christmas. Only the God of the Christian faith, only Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit come to us in such a way that they come to us in person. They come to show us how things can be with them. We may not think a lot about that at the moment. We may be thinking, this is all pretty grim. But it wasn't that great when Jesus came either. And life with him is richer and fuller and deeper and more complete than we can imagine than life without him is. And he chose, he forsook heaven in order that he could draw us into that life. He chose to live as one of us to celebrate good things and share the difficult things of human life. And he promised never to abandon us until we are finally home free with him. We struggle, perhaps, today. It's not the day that we were looking for. But Christ is always the same, always good, always with us, always calling us to know him more, always drawing us into that love and grace that the Father sent him to show to us. One of the things that reminds me about yeah, we need to be reminded about at Christmas is just how much we are loved and just how far God came to show us. Amen. So our final prayer and blessing. O oh God, who makest us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thine only Son, Jesus Christ, 
grant that as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. And so may be he, by who is incarnation, gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.